Hello and welcome to episode 48 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet in my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is April 20th, 2020. I hope you enjoyed the special episode I did last week and because I did that I can show you all the things I knit and crochet during the last two weeks. Um, so I think um, I managed to finish a few more things than usual and I tried not to start too many new things so I can maybe reduce the number of works in progresses I have um, and maybe even pick up some old things that are languishing somewhere that I haven't finished but started ages ago. But before I show you any of these, I'll talk about what I'm wearing. And the scarf I'm wearing is um, crocheted, it's just very simple granny squares. And the yarn I used is called Rigato, it's by Wollrödel, a German yarn company. And I used one ball for each square. So um, I used five different colors and I crocheted almost all of the ball so um, it's all different color combinations with more or less red in them and I have another scarf just like that with green and blue and gray and black I think um, that I've shown before in another episode maybe not an English one but in one of my German ones and um, I crocheted the first one because I wanted to show off the colors and I wanted to give people an idea of how um, how much you can crochet with one ball and after I finished the first scarf I thought if I did four more scarves like that I could um, I could then sew them together and have a blanket and I like the idea of having a, a colorful blanket like this but then after I finished the second scarf I realized that I enjoyed wearing the scarf so much I didn't want to sew them together and I never crocheted a number three and four. So I have these two scarves that I really like a lot and, um, and they're very easy to make and um, yeah so that's the scarf I'm wearing today and the pullover I'm wearing that's um, something special it's not it was not knit by me so Usually um, at this point I show you something that I made myself, um, could be something new or something really old, but um, I've now shown all the winter pullovers I have and jackets that I have made um, that I still own. Um, so last time I did a regular podcast episode, I repeated, um, I wore a pullover that I'd worn before on the podcast. And now I'm, um, I will also show the pullovers and jackets that I have and that I wear that I did not make myself. And actually this is not the first time I'm wearing this uh, on camera because this is uh, one of the pullovers that I, um, that I have worn to do my special episodes where I don't talk about what I'm wearing because it's, it's very, um, it's dark and it doesn't have any pattern. So it's a nice background to, to be showing other things and the pullover was knit by my sister and the reason she gave it to me is because the sleeves were too short for her they're even a bit short for me but her arms are longer than mine so they were way too short for her the pullover is nice and long um, it's very simple she loves to knit simple things and I do enjoy wearing simple things but I don't really enjoy knitting them <laughs> so I was very happy when she asked me if I wanted to have this jumper and I've worn it a lot and um, and it goes perfectly with all the colorful scarves and shawls that I make so that's a very good combination so that's what I'm wearing today and um, yeah now to my finished objects um, the first thing I want to show you today is not knit a crochet which is um, unusual I usually just show um, knit and crochet things um, but yeah we live in special times and so we need to do special things and one of the things um, that's happening at the moment is the corona pandemic and um, here in Germany the shops are allowed to open again um, from today on but um, we are advised to wear 
um, face masks. So it's not a rule, you wouldn't, we don't have to. And I think um, the main reason for not making it a rule is that there are not enough masks to go around. So um, they do strongly advise so, but they don't, we don't have to do it. But um, as I want to start, I want to go back to opening my shop from tomorrow on, I thought it'd be good to have a few masks to be able to wear them when I'm here and to be able to wear them when I'm on the bus. So my husband doesn't have to take me to my shop every day. So I tried my sewing skills. I'm not very good at sewing, and um, but I still have some leftover fabrics and uh, I do have a sewing machine. So I tried my hand at sewing some of those masks. I'm not going to put them on now. Um, I made two with these strips of jersey fabric that you can tie behind your back, behind the back of your head. And I made two with these um, elastics. So these are quite nice because they're very thin. So um, they're quite nice behind the ear. But then I tried one mask with these and they're really too big. So if they're behind the ear, <laughs> the ear flops over like that. So that's not a very comfortable one. But um, I thought, well, it's better than nothing. So I sewed them, I washed them at 60 degrees in the washing machine. And um, yeah, so I have four of them. I have the one that I knitted. So um, that should get me through one week of working and going to work. And um, then I can wash them during the weekend and use them again. So we'll see for how long we'll, we will need them. Yeah, but that was the sewing. Now on to knitting and crochet. And I have quite a few finished objects that I have knit. Nothing finished that I crocheted. I'll start off with the pullover that I already had as a finished object last week. And that's my raglano. And it was, I'd finished knitting it last week, but I hadn't washed it yet. So I don't know if you remember that the pattern was um, bunched up more and um, wasn't quite clear how long the pullover was going to be. And the, um, I can't really call it ribbing because it's garter stitch, but um, the collar was, um, yeah, didn't look quite as nice before I washed it. But now I'm really very happy with it. The sleeves got just a bit longer the way I needed them to be. And the front and back um, are really nice and long. And as you can see, the, um, the wavy pattern really shows nicely after the blocking. I didn't really block it very hard. I just laid it flat and then I pinned down those points just to make sure they stay down. And um, yeah, and the pattern is um, comes out a lot nicer now because the garter stitch doesn't scrunch up as much as it did before and the, the lace pattern is more visible now and I'm really really happy. Um, if it doesn't get too warm I'm probably going to wear the pullover um, in one of the next episodes and then I'll show you what it looks like on me and I'll then I'll climb on the chair and show you how long it is. Yeah so that's my raglano that's all done and finished now. Um, and that means that the knit along that we did together is sort of coming to a close. It doesn't mean you can't finish your pullover, you could even start a new one. I'll leave the discussion group on Ravelry open, you can always add something to it. But now that I've finished mine and I think we've had a lot of time um, knitting the pullover together, now we can go on to the next thing. And I'll talk about that at the end of the episode. So then I knit quite a few socks and the first pair I'll show you are stockings. So these are the, this is the second pair of stockings that I knit for friends of mine um, and they're finally done. I knit them with the yarn held double and it's two different colors that I used. I used this colorful one held double for the cuff and then for the leg I held one with the yellow and blue and the gray one held double. This is how long the sock blockers are. <laughs> it's 
so this is how long the stockings are and then for the uh, for the toe and the heel I held the grey yarn double and um, the foot snip the same as the leg yeah so I finished these and I hope that they can come around and pick them up sometime soon and I'm really happy I finished them and I really want stockings like that for myself now not quite sure whether I start them now or wait um, till fall and then knit them for the winter but um, I'll see so now this is a pair of socks that's quite the opposite that's the opal yarn with um, cotton in it so about 30 percent of the yarn is cotton and then there's about 30 percent 30 something percent wool and uh, some nylon and I finished these um, yeah I love the colors in the yarn the pattern is a very simple one that I made up some years ago um, I've meant to write it down, maybe I will do that someday. I still haven't got around to doing that. Um, I'm very happy that the colors um, came out really differently without me having to do anything. I just, when I finished the first sock, I just started the second and the colors um, just ended up being in really different places and, uh, and I love it. Yeah, so these socks will go to my cousin, maybe for Christmas, maybe for her birthday. We'll see. Um, then there's another pair of socks that I've uh, started and finished since I podcast last time. And it's these tiny little spiral sock, baby socks. So um, this is a DK weight Opal sock yarn. And uh, I knit them to, sh to make a video on how to knit spiral socks. Um, I, so far I've only done my tutorials in German because I think there's so many tutorials out there in English uh, I don't really need to do them in English but if anyone wanted to hear an English version I might be able to translate them but as I said I'm sure there are enough English versions out there but I made a German video on how to knit these spiral socks and um, yeah they're very quick to do and uh, I really enjoyed doing them now the last um, finished object that I have for this week is the test knit cowl I knit for Yuki Knits. Um, the Sea Holly Cowl, I think, was the name. Um, I still don't know whether the pattern has been published or not, um, but this is what it looks like. So this is where it started. So you've already seen this part of the pattern. That's where these bubbly things were. And then... Um, the pattern changed so that the the decreases and increases were stacked on top of each other and then the the top part is the one i probably love best is uh, where the the brioche pattern goes over into um, um, garter stitch and then there's only this and these um, brioche stitches left and i really really like the way um, it looks like like uh, flower buds um, sort of and also because of the pattern changing the cowl is smaller on top than it is down here and it really sits nicely uh, on the neck so um, I used the colorful yarn is a opal hand painted yarn that we got in the subscription as an extra in in a um, December package and the other side the second color that I used for the two color brioche is the red um, opal yarn with silk it's a special yarn that they came out one or two years ago and I really like the combination of the red and the the oranges and, and pinks and um, yellows of the other yarn and uh, yeah I really think they look very nice together and depending on what I'm wearing I can either wear this side out or I can wear this side out. You can fold it over like this. So it's a beautiful pattern. It's well written. Um, there were a few problems during the test knit, which just shows how good it is to have a test knit like that. But they're all worked out now. And um, yeah, I hope the, set the pattern is going to be released soon. As I said, I have um, linked to the original pattern on my Ravelry page. So as soon as the pattern is um, released, You'll be able to um, to go to the pattern page from my Ravelry pattern page. Yeah, so that's the 
finished objects. Quite a few things you can do if you have two weeks time. Um, now on to my works in progress. And I'll continue as usual with the socks. Um, last week I showed you the beginning of these cashmere socks. I'm knitting for a friend who's who has very sensitive feet and um, even though there's not a lot of cashmere in here I hope she'll be able to wear them and I'm sure she'll like them I know she likes the color I'm knitting on my Nico needles um, Nico flex needles it's these um, special needles that are flexible here and they have beautiful bamboo tips um, and they have an online shop so you can order the Nico needles from their website. Yep, otherwise very simple socks. Um, I just have to keep knitting on them. And then I started or I knit one little baby sock. <laughs> this is the right pattern by Tim Ken Knits. It's a um, free pattern as part of their simple collection. And I knit this sock because I'm thinking of doing another tutorial video um, showing how to knit these socks. So they're knit with a heel flap and um, with a garter band on top. And I really like the pattern. They look pretty wide and short and they look pretty big for being the smallest size in the pattern. But um, yeah, I think for a little baby, you can always put them on top of something else of some other socks and um, yeah, so I'm hoping to film the knitting of the second of these socks. And then I started another sock and it's another test knit. Um, I finished one test knit, so I felt like I could start with another test knit. Um, and I'm just wondering, I don't think I'd started it by uh, the last time I recorded. And the pattern is called the Berlin Socks and the pattern is by Chihiro from Momino Kiyans, I think is her company. I'll link it down below so you can find it. And I'm using three different yarns by Opal. And basically you can use scraps to knit these socks, but um, as I was at home and not in my shop and I didn't have all my scraps to hand, um, but I had some balls of yarn lying around, I decided to use those. And, um, oh, this is the wrong color. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is the right color. Okay, so I'm using two colors from the series Comedy, and it's this pink with a bit of blue, and it's this blue with a bit of gray, and and also the pink has a tiny bit of gray. So I decided to add this color um, from the series Jazz, and. Um, and I decided to use these three colors together and I really like the way they come together. And in the pattern, she uses four different colors and then she mixes color one and two and then two and three and three and four and so on. But if you do that, you don't get a mix of all the colors. So there's always two colors that are not being mixed together. But with doing, doing three colors, you mix every color with every other color. So I started with the blue held double and then I mixed the blue and the pink. Then I used the pink held double, then I mixed the pink and the gray and then I held the gray double and so on. And I'll show you. So this is the blue held double. This is blue and pink. This is pink doubled in itself. This is pink and gray. This is gray doubled, gray and blue. This is the blue doubled again, blue and pink, pink and pink, pink and gray and so on and so forth. And I used the contrast color for the heel. So as I was knitting with the blue and gray, I used the pink. And um, I finished the foot now. And now I'm going to knit the toe using the gray. So for one, because I'm using the blue and pink at the moment, so gray is the contrast. And also because I have a blue cuff and a pink heel, I thought a gray toe would be great. And um, the way the toe is knit is very special. So that's one of the special things in the pattern. Um, and I'll show you next week. Um, the sock is knit at a really tight gauge, which, which is a bit unusual for me. I usually use a bit um, 
bigger gauge so not quite as tight because I like socks to be soft but this is really sturdy so I think I can probably wear these as house shoes and I can probably wear them for years and years <laughs> because they're really sturdy and really um, tough and tight um, yeah so that's the Berlin socks it's a test net and um, I'll let you know as soon as the pattern is available and for the second sock I can already say that I'm going to switch out the colors so I'm going to start with a different color in the cuff and then because of that I'll have a different color here and a different color for the toe um, can't wait to see how that works out so that's the other sock I'm knitting and I started knitting um, the wrist warmers that I had planned to do um, I think I forgot to talk about that last time, but um, yeah. My son has asked me to do some wrist warmers for him and because he wears black all the time, I decided to, to use this black uh, pure wool yarn. It's called Soft Merino. It's a Wollrödel yarn and um, it's always very difficult to see. And the pattern is the same pattern that I use for the blue um, socks that I knit a few weeks ago, these really large socks where I held the yarn, did I hold the yarn double or did I use the, um, I was the way yarn, I think I was, I used the, the eight ply yarn, um, which is the same yarn weight as this. And for the socks, I had done the cuffs in, um, in a two by two rib. And then for the leg and the foot, I'd done, I'd, um, knit two rows stocking it and then two rows um, two by two rib um, and I meant to do the same for the wrist warmers for my son but then he said well it doesn't really make sense to have the 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 tight bit on the ends where the hands and the the, the elbow are so that that's where his arm is wider and uh, and then where the arm is thin you have the wider pattern so he um, asked me to do the pattern bit at the ends and the ribbing in the middle. So that's what I did. And I've just started um, doing the, the pattern again. And then my yarn ran out and I have to start a new ball. And I thought, well, I'll add the ball after I've done, I've done the um, video. And um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. It's supposed to go up to the elbow. And then I'm knitting the pattern for like half the hand, but without a thumb hole, he said. With, um, he would prefer it like that so he can move it around more. Yep, so that's that, the wrist warmer in black. But weather's been really nice, so it's okay to knit black yarn. So what else? I have not added any squares to my memory blanket. Um, I have knitted, continued knitting on my kangaroo trousers. The Stephen West Kangaroos. And I have finished the second leg on the second piece. So that's done. And now I can start assemble, assembling the trousers. And this is the color, this is the yarn I'm using. This is a DK weight Opal sock yarn again. So DK weight in German is sechsfach, which is like six ply. And then the eight ply is um, even thicker than that. And oops. So um, I'm using, I'm going to use the, this dark blue to do the waistband and also to do the strips that go down the side and that go uh, in between the legs here to attach the pieces together. So um, I'll see how far I get with that um, for next week. So that's the kangaroos. Then I crocheted a bit. I am doing the crochet along from the Simply Crochet magazine and I'm doing one version in the same neon colors that the um, magazine has and I'm doing that out of sock yarn but then I decided to do a cotton version as well um, because you have to wait a month for the next piece of the instruction I thought I could do another pullover as well and um, because I decided that when the third part of the pattern was out I'd start it with the third part that was the second part of the pattern. And now I finished the first bit. So that was the first part of the crochet along 
that was in the first magazine that had the pattern in it. And I think last time I'd already done the round thing, but not the squaring off. So I finished that. And as it's April and the next magazine um, uh, was published, uh, I have the next part of the pattern that looks like this. And it's the small square again. And this time uh, we're supposed to do this twice. So with the second part of the instructions, we were doing the same pattern, but in different colors. But this time they say to do um, the same thing twice. Twice for the pullover and four times for the blanket. So um, I finished the first and this is the beginning of the second. Um, so even though this doesn't really look round anymore, but this is how it starts off. And then um, I still need to do the rest. And I haven't done the fourth part with the sock yarn yet. So we'll see uh, when I get around to doing that. Um, talking about crochet along and knit along, I have also added one square to the Anna and Carlos knit along. And I did this square. This is um, again DK weight sock yarn. The light blue, I think was a Regia yarn, but it's an old strap that I had lying around at home, so I'm not too sure. And the dark blue is the same color that I'm using for my for my kangaroo trousers. So um, yeah, I, ha I have several. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have several balls of yarn that I have started because I've probably because I've already done several things with this color so I had some at home and some here in the shop um, so this is the fourth square that I've done um, so there's still a lot of patterns that I haven't knit up um, I'm not sure I'm going to make them all but I'll see what happens I enjoy doing them so as long as I enjoy it, enjoy it I'll just keep doing it then the next thing I want to show you is the Crystal Bay Shawl by Romy that I'm knitting out of this beautiful Voldacke yarn, World of Fuchsia. And um, that's this nice little shawlette that starts with this garter bit and then you add this knitted on lace. And I've added a few more pattern repeats. And I've actually finished all the pattern repeats that are being knit um, so like straight on. So one every two rows eats one of the stitches in the shawl. And now I'm um, the only thing left to do is the last three patterns. And with these, I will do the same as with the first three patterns. And that means that I'm going to knit more rows then I have stitches and I will um, knit into some of the stitches twice um, so that um, yeah, I have more fabric than I'm supposed to have. So it'll be nice and round when it's finished. Yeah, so three more pattern repeats. Maybe I'll finish that this week. And talking about lace pattern, I have continued knitting on my Hitofude jacket. That's a Japanese pattern for a jacket that you can knit with one string of yarn. And I'm using the Vollmeise lace. Um, and I had already finished the sleeves last time I showed it to you, but I hadn't finished the, um, the neckline. So I finished the ribbing that goes in between the upper bag and the lower bag. And um, I have now cast off for the neckline and I have increased the stitches so that I have enough stitches to, um, to be the fronts and the back just continues down. And I have now finished three pattern repeats and now um, there'll be more increases for the fronts. So all the stitches in front of this marker, there'll be increases and the same on this side. And then those stitches will be the fronts and the back will just go straight back down. This is the neckline and these are the sleeves. 
yep, it's a bit, it's a very unusual construction, but it's very clever and um, can't wait to finish the jacket someday. But yeah, but knitting on it is this a joy as well. So then, oh, I forgot the cowl. Um, I'm knitting the Don't Touch Your Face cowl by Nicola Susan. Nicolas, um, um, the name of her pattern or how she releases her patterns. And this is the Opal Glitter Yarn that I'm using. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry, Don't Touch Your Face. And um, this has been my project that I've worked on when we went on walks because we had to stay at home. And the last couple of weeks, uh, my husband and I did go on walks a lot more than we usually do. And because this is very easy to knit and it's fairly small, um, I used to knit on that while we were walking around. Yeah, like it. I'm not quite sure um, how long it's supposed to be, but I think I will probably try and use up most of the ball and have a nice cowl. And I can pull that over my face if I do not have a face mask with me. Um, yeah, very nice. And one more, one more thing to show you. I have been knitting on my jacket, um, the hooded jacket that I've been knitting for ages and ages. And I had already, I had started with the hood, but then I have cut, I cut it off and I am re-knitting the hood. And I think I'm probably almost done with the hood. I'll have to try it on again. Um, so this is, um, these are the sleeves. So this is probably where the raglan increase has started. So this could be high enough. I didn't want the fabric to stretch when I put the hood on. So um, I really mean to knit it long enough. And then once I have the height I want, I'm going to fold it over like this and I will Kitchener stitch it together and then it'll finally be done. And I'll probably sew on some snaps so I can close it. And, um, and I've used up all the yarn that I had from the old hood that I'd uh, undone. And um, so I've attached another ball of yarn. It's another DK weight Opal sock yarn. Reiselust was the series. And this is Paraguay, the color Paraguay. Yeah, so I'm really, really hoping to finish this hood this week so I can show you the finished jacket next week. Maybe I'll even have it washed. I don't know. No promises. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. Oh, one last thing. Um, as I said, the Raglano knit along is now coming to a close and we can start the next knit along. And I have decided that I would like to knit a lace shawl, as I've probably told you before. And I have picked out the pattern Haruni. Haruni. It's a free shawl pattern for a triangular shawl. And, um, but you can buy patterns for either a cowl or a, I think for a um, square shawl and one that's a bit like a spiral. So she has lots and lots of variations for this Haruni shawl. And I have decided to use a three ply Opal sock yarn, which is thinner than the normal fingering weight sock yarn. And um, this is this bright pink with a bit of yellow and um, just a hint of turquoise. Um, and I've wanted to make a shawl out of this yarn in whatever color ever since I got the yarn three years ago, I think. <laughs> and now I've decided this is the right pattern to be doing it. And this is the color I want to do, I want to use um, so this is going to be the new knit along. I'm going to open up a discussion group in the Ravelry group that we have um, for Kiko's Strickschule. And um, yeah, you can let me know if you want to take part and you can show us what yarn you want to use and then we can all knit together on this shawl. So that was all the things I knit and crocheted on for the last two weeks. I hope you enjoyed seeing them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.